Hi guys and welcome to the first video in my series on the solo growth model. This is part of a wider set of videos that I'll be creating on bachelor level economics. So the structure of this series on the solo growth model will fundamentally be broken down into three parts. We'll be very briefly looking at what the solo growth model actually is and what it shows and that's what we'll be looking at in today's video. In other tutorials, we'll be looking at the model with no technological progress, and then we'll be looking at the model with technological progress. We'll also be applying these models by changing different variables and seeing how the economy should react. So we can very simply look at what the solo growth model shows by looking at the business cycle. Now the business cycle shows levels of real output relative to the time and it shows that over time we get peaks in GDP and we get troughs. So for example a peak would have been 2006 and a trough would perhaps be 2010. And it shows that over time actually GDP is increasing and it can be shown through this dotted blue line. And this dotted blue line is always increasing. So we have short term fluctuations in peaks and troughs, but over the long term in the economy, GDP is actually increasing. And the solar growth model actually explains this. And what, how it explains this is through technological progress. So I'm just gonna write technology there. And, and these, the solar growth model essentially says that this dotted blue line is caused by technological progress, but it's not caused by capital. So capital, it is not caused by that. And the reason for this is that capital has decreasing returns to scale in the economy. So if you keep increasing capital with a fixed labor supply, you're not going to increase output continuously because you have reached a steady state. Now, I'm going to explain what that steady state actually is later on in the video. But for the moment, all you need to know about the solar growth model is that technology or technological progress is what causes long term um, growth in GDP levels, not increases in capital. So we can explain the solar growth model through a set of three curves, as illustrated on the screen. On the x-axis, we have little k, and little k is capital per worker. So we can rewrite this as capital K divided by N, where capital K is the overall amount of capital in the economy, and N is the overall amount of people who are in the workforce. And y is, um, little y is equal to output per worker. So again, we can rewrite this as capital Y, the overall output in the economy, divided by N, the number of people in the economy. So we have these three curves here. And what we can do is explain uh, the solar growth model through these three curves. So we're going to start off with the depreciation curve. And the depreciation curve is this straight line that goes up and essentially all this curve shows is that as we increase capital we get an increase in depreciation essentially depreciation is proportional to the amount of capital in the economy and this makes intuitive sense as you increase the amount of capital the amount of depreciation i.e how how often your machines go faulty is likely to increase so depreciation is upward sloping relative to the amount of capital up here we have output per worker is some factor of capital per worker and again this makes sense as you increase the amount of capital per worker you're going to get an increase in output per worker and we're going to say that investment here, investment is some factor of output per worker, but we're going to multiply that by the savings rate. The reason for this is that savings 
are relative to investments. The idea in the model is that the amount that you save is then spent on investment. So let's just look intuitively at what the model actually shows. So let's take a point on the graph, for example, here. And we're gonna go here. So at this level of capital per worker, um, what it actually shows is that the investment is above the depreciation. And hence, therefore, the level of investment in the economy is going to increase. Whereas, for example, if we go here, the depreciation is above the investment function, and therefore, we're going to get a decrease in, in, in investment, net investment in the economy. So this leads to us reaching a steady state equilibrium here. And the reason for that is because here you're going to get an increase in investment because investment exceeds depreciation. And here you're going to get a decrease in investment because depreciation exceeds investment. And hence, therefore, your economy will always end up at the steady state equilibrium labeled SSE um, since investments will always increase to this certain point and then above this point it will depreciate. So that explains the fundamentals of the solar growth model. In other tutorials we're going to be talking about how to derive this mathematically. But for the moment that's the fundamentals of the model. Please comment, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed it.